Hello. I'd like to talk today on the topic of uh, do some people take too much responsibility for others' feelings? And uh, I'll go into why I bring this up at this present time, but um, I think it ties in a lot, too, with the question of uh, victimology. Is so-and-so a victim, let's say, of, of trauma, or are they failing to res take responsibility for their feelings? Um, you could say in another way, uh, is so-and-so playing the victim card and permanently in life? Or uh, are they failing to take responsibility? Um, I think part of the problem when we ask this question is uh, kind of an all-or-nothing question. Either somebody takes responsibility for their feelings uh, of whatever origin, or they are not taking any responsibility. Uh, you can kind of look at this, I think, in a... Uh, uh, throw out the baby with the bathwater question type question. Now this is a question I've been pondering for many, many years. I'd say probably at least 30 years. And When I first started asking this kind of a question, it was in my 20s. And a psychoanalyst once told me, ironically, do whatever you feel like doing, just don't get caught. Well, that was a very challenging thought to me, and um, I'll share with you some other approaches I've seen more lately. On the internet once, there was a counselor, I believe with a master's degree in psychology, and he said, some people take too much responsibility for others' feelings, and what you need to do to fix that is to um, realize that feelings are others' responsibility. So basically, don't worry about others' feelings at all. Just do what you'd like, once again. And then there is a man, a psychologist, uh, born in Israel to a German mother, by the name of Offer Zur, O F E R Z U R. And he struggled much with uh, his war experiences and came to America in 1980. And he wrote some very interesting material on victimology and the theory of this. Uh, which I think is uh, um, well worth looking into for those who uh, are, are struggling with this issue. But at any rate, he talks of how, in his opinion, there are way too many people claiming to be victims and way too many victim groups. And that some people sue and win in court cases uh, claiming they're a victim when, in fact, they haven't taken responsibility uh, for their role in uh, whatever happened to them, and I would say, by extension, taking responsibility for their feelings of pain in general. And finally, what has really set this off uh, in my mind is having rewatched the movie uh, that's entitled The Bridges of Madison County, which came out in 1995, starring Meryl Streep and Clint Eastwood, where Meryl Streep uh, plays a woman, Francesca, a war bride from Italy, who comes to America, goes to Iowa, and marries a farmer and has children. And Clint Eastwood plays Robert Kincaid, a National Geographic magazine 
photographer who goes to Iowa to photograph covered bridges there. And in the process, Clint Eastwood meets the farmer's wife, Meryl Streep, while her husband is away with the children at a fair. And then for the next four days, they spend all their time together, uh, Clint Eastwood and Meryl Streep, and um, have what you'd call an affair. After that point in time, the husband and their children return to the farm, and she is very torn up what to do, and eventually decides uh, to stick with her family rather than uh, go off with Clint Eastwood and do what she would prefer doing. Or spend time with a man who was uh, much kinder and more appreciative of her, her assets and so on. So the question then was in her mind, um, uh, I think, um, uh, is she wanting to take too much responsibility for her husband and children's feelings if she were to leave? Or uh, was it appropriate that she stuck with the family for their benefit, for their feelings, uh, and compromise some of what she wanted, her feelings? Now, in this article by Ofer Zur, he points out some of his thoughts and some writings on victimology and taking responsibility. And it's brought up that uh, there are extenuating circumstances uh, in, in certain people's opinions about taking responsibility for feelings. And amongst other uh, issues brought up is um, whether there's mental retardation involved whereby someone then couldn't take responsibility of their feelings because they couldn't think properly. And I'd like to bring up some of my own thinking then as to what might influence us to cut people some slack and say that uh, maybe they can't take full responsibility for their feelings because of certain conditions or situations. Um, the, the term um, mental, mentally retarded or feeble-minded comes to, to mind, uh, written about in this article by Zor, but what about the bigger issue of age? For instance, someone who says they've been traumatized from childhood, um, well, there are issues. It's childhood. It's not adulthood that the trauma happened in first of all. Uh, second of all, uh, take from uh, uh, Christianity and the doctrine of hell um, uh, the concept of the age of accountability, say around age seven maybe, where someone who chose not to be a Christian isn't held responsibility for eternal punishment if they were below, say, the age of seven, this age of accountability. And I would say that this was entailing uh, the, the concept uh, that if someone is too young, um, they can't um, properly process what happens to them. Say, they don't have enough um, intelligence or IQ, if you will, they don't have enough life experiences and they don't have enough capacity to remember things and how to in general or review what has happened to them. And they also don't have the capacity to discuss life with others below a certain age point. Now we might also say, um, oh, let's say we're down and out and we're financially destitute. Why don't we just sell heroin uh, to get the money and let others take responsibility for their feelings if they have an overdose or, um, or suffer from a heroin addiction or aftermath or 
hepatitis from injecting it. Or say, why don't we just mug an 80-year-old grandmother uh, walking down the street for $5 in her purse and say she needs to take responsibility for her feelings when she's knocked down and gets broken bones and goes to the hospital. And of course, uh, there's plenty of emotional trauma that's probably even worse. Why don't we just say then she needs to take responsibility for the feelings uh, when she was mugged for the five dollars? Well, I think again there's the question of whether the 80-year-old person has the um, faculties to process what has happened to the person um, such that we would say they can't take responsibility for their feelings of being mugged because they're too old. Um, say their mind is too feeble or also that they couldn't flee because they uh, they were walking too slowly and infirm physically in general. But then when it comes to someone above age 7 or after the age of 18 but below 80 are there also some other extenuating circumstances that make it impossible or highly unlikely for them to take responsibility for their feelings and that we need then to take this into account. Uh, for instance, um, if a child below the age of seven is held not responsibility for eternal punishment because of insufficient intelligence, well what about a lot of adults? Uh, do they have, especially today, the requisite intelligence to handle trauma or let's say certain crimes. Oh, just because they graduated from high school for instance or a college I believe in my mind does not mean much at all especially these days uh, as to whether they learned anything and can think in general. And of course if they can't think very well how can they handle any trauma, including crimes or um, um, some other adversities that some say they should take responsibility for. How can you take responsibility for anything if you can't think about it properly? And then, um, what if you don't have the time to think about the trauma uh, and, and to grow past it? How can we say that so-and-so needs to take responsibility for pain in their lives from some some outside force, trauma if you will, or crime related issues, trauma again, if they don't have the time to process it because they're working 40 to 80 hours a week uh, for housing and food on the table. And uh, this is brought up, by the way, by some people like Leo Gura on Actualize.org who says one of the requisites for personal growth is having enough time for the exploration of uh, issues and, and growing in general. I'm uh, reminded, too, of examples of how high levels of intelligence have been crucial to some of the people I most revere the advice from. Again, I bring up Leo Gura, who is not a guru, of course, in my mind, and others, and uh, some others. Uh, he's not a perfect man by any means, but I think he has many great things to say. Uh, a wonderful philosopher. Uh, you might say homeschooled and autodidact. And wouldn't you know, he was once a software architect um, and originally from Russia. Uh, no one would say Russians are dummies, I think, and some of the greatest chess players have been Russians, the grandmasters. So he designed video software or videos as a software architect for some time before moving on. 
uh, to uh, psychological and philosophical issues in starting his YouTube channel, Actualize.org. Other examples. Um, I once, 15 years ago, spent several uh, years attending a meditation retreat center on Saturdays. And I was told around that um, perhaps the greatest person to follow in the Buddhist traditions was Pima, Pima Chodron. She, I think it's C-H-O-D-R-I-N was spelling of her last name. Well, amazingly, later I found out she was a graduate of Berkeley University and had a family, uh, or was married at least, before she became a nun, a Buddhist nun. So again, above average levels of intelligence in these two people whose advice I and many people revere greatly. And then uh, what about um, Gandhi? Gandhi was once a lawyer. So a man of no small uh, mental acumen there, too. Um, we could ask ourselves, would he have uh, had the emotional intelligence uh, to be who he was and uh, lead his nation as he did if he hadn't been a lawyer? Uh, as a prerequisite. And then there's uh, Andrei Sakharov uh, from Russia, a great dissident in, say, the 1970s. Well, he was once a great physicist. Um, finally, last but probably not least, what about uh, a man, uh, again a Buddhist I revere greatly, having discovered just a month or two ago uh, he heads up one of the biggest monasteries, um, oh, I think in the Southern Hemisphere, Ajahn Brahm, A-J-H-N-B-R-H-M, I believe, in Western Australia. Uh, he's a most wonderful, uh, wonderfully insightful and humorous man. And wouldn't you know, I discovered yesterday that he attended Cambridge University in England and studied theoretical physics uh, before uh, then teaching a year of high school uh, in England and becoming disenchanted and um, moving on to study Buddhism, I believe going to the jungles uh, for years in Thailand for part of his training. And now at the age of 69, quite a profound uh, Buddhist leader. Oh, and I can't help but bring up one more person who I have revered considerably, Albert Schweitzer. Well, how many people know I sure didn't until I read a biography on him a couple years ago uh, that he had a medical degree, but I believe two PhDs also. Everybody told him he was cuckoo uh, to leave Europe and go to Africa when he could have done, quote, so much better for himself financially and fame-wise by staying in Europe to utilize all these three degrees. But he had said that uh, according to scriptures in the Bible, to whom much hath been given, much is expected. And he considered that he had been given much from his loving parents, he said, uh, a Lutheran minister and, uh, and his, uh, his mother. So the upshot of what I'm asking myself and, and throwing out here for consideration is... If it took the mental genius, if you will, of these people to be so profound, then uh, how can we expect others to take full responsibility for their feelings 
if they don't have degrees from Berkeley or Cambridge or uh, a medical degree and two PhDs and uh, degrees in physics and theoretical physics and so on. I might finally throw in too that Albert Schweitzer was not just renowned for uh, discovering and elucidating the theory of relativity but uh, for his social justice pursuits uh, uh, during World War II. Uh, and I, I would say that had he not been a profound physicist, that uh, he probably wouldn't have had the mental capacity to, to um, not only come up with uh, the theory of relativity, but uh, be a world leader uh, in, um, in fighting Mr. Hitler and so on. Social injustice. Now, there are some who would say, well, if you've been traumatized, why don't you get help? And um, one man, in fact, um, um, I ran across uh, on YouTube recently. I'm not sure what his credentials were, but he said, really, what you need to do to take responsibility for your life and your feelings is to shut off your TV. And then uh, you would be able to get your act together. You would be able to focus on your issues if you just got rid of your TV. But will that do it alone? Uh, if it took a degree from Berkeley or uh, two PhDs in a medical degree or um, degrees from Cambridge, say, uh, to accomplish what some people have accomplished. And what about those who say, well, why don't you go to rehab? If you have issues, why don't you take responsibility and go to rehab? But Grant Cardone, for instance, um, whose uh, net financial worth is now over $2 billion, has recounted his own rehab experience, and uh, Russell Brand has too in England, and both say rehab stinks generally. And uh, that most people coming out just come out with new addictions, say to methadone or buprenorphine. And that the root issues never really get addressed, except maybe in just a few uh, very specialized uh, and uh, top-notch clinics. And there's the example, too, of um, Dr. Jordan Peterson, a uh, quite renowned psychologist in Canada and on YouTube, who... Uh, several years ago became addicted to clonopin after his wife uh, developed brain cancer around 2016. and He went from clinic to clinic, uh, rehab to rehab, all over the country and finally in Russia trying to beat this uh, clonopin addiction, and he almost died. And so it's not so easy to take responsibility for your feelings, your trauma, uh, your struggles, if... if uh, he went to rehab after rehab, say, and almost died not getting the treatment he needed. That's not as easy as just to say, get help, then. Uh, that, you know, all you have to do is get help. And that's uh, part and parcel of taking responsibility, some would say. Uh, consider, too, um, is it so easy to, quote, take responsibility for your feelings and your your trauma and such if uh, if you just quote go into therapy or see a professional uh, for some people say that Freud is dead depth therapy is dead and that all therapists are simply rent a friends and uh, basically what you need is just to take uh, psychiatric medications for the rest of your life and um, count yourself lucky they're available and um, and just go with that. And, and so again, there's uh, a lot of dispute as to whether uh, taking responsibility or for your feelings by pursuing, quote, professional help is really even going to do much good at all. And yet another example. Um, two people who I would say somewhat came out the other end uh, from a lot of difficulties in life. One of them 
Robert Green, a, a Jewish man who uh, was raised, I believe, in Los Angeles. And he amazingly lost 50 jobs before becoming a successful writer. I believe it was about 50 jobs. And uh, there are, are videos put out with him describing this. And um, he really hit pay dirt as an author after a certain point in time when I would say basically he learned certain key things about life that changed him around. And, and possibly there are allusions to his uh, uh, affinity for Jungian therapy. And, but at any rate, in one point, in one video, he says what was so transformative was when he met a man in Italy uh, by chance, and that man kind of took him under his wing, at least financially backing him, and, and that this was what you might call the catalyst uh, for the growth that shifted Robert Greene's life. Uh, all previous efforts for him to, quote, take responsibility for his feelings or his failures were, were not getting anywhere. It was just a stroke of luck that set him on the right path uh, for recovery, if you will. A second example being Jim Rohn, uh, the former great uh, motivational speaker, who one day, just by blind chance, met a man who took him under his wing for five years and transformed him. What if he hadn't met this man? In fact, I related this incident to my mother about Jim Rohn and this stroke of luck. My mother's reaction was it, it wasn't fair, in fact, that Jim Rohn had uh, been taken under someone's wing like this for, and, and the profound outcome. So if it took this, like almost a, uh, uh, what I would joke as a uh, crash landing in your backyard from someone from Mars who was a top analyst and wanted to spend the rest of their few years with you for free helping you, well then, uh, maybe it's possible that it isn't so easy to take responsibility for our feelings as it, as it first seems. Now, at this point, I'm kind of going to wrap things up here, but uh, this is as much musing in my mind and putting out these questions and ideas to others. I, I don't have uh, a whole lot of uh, solutions uh, other than to bring up this matter and what I've uh, run across so far uh, in reading and watching movies, YouTubes, and personal experience. Uh, and the help I've received, too. But um, while I don't have a lot of solutions, I, I think I, I, I hope that what I bring up is uh, a partial a solution to some in, in, in that I'm bringing up some information they may not have heard before or run across, that uh, this topic of victimization uh, has been wonderfully addressed by... Uh, Ofer Zur, once again, f that a person can look this up. O F E R Z U R. And um, the article, in fact, that I read that stimulated some of this thinking was in goodtherapy.org um, with a subtopic of famous psychologists. So, at any rate, um, the upshot, I think, that I'm trying to communicate to and think about is that um, this topic of victimization and taking responsibility for our feelings or too much for others' feelings um, is not a simple all-or-nothing thing. And, uh, and that uh, it's a little more complex than just to say, uh, do whatever you want and let others deal with it. Let them deal with the, uh, their pain and let them take responsibility for their feelings. Uh, that it isn't quite that simple. And we all human beings, I think, would like to simplify things in all or nothing categories all too often. And unfortunately, that's probably 
in my mind where some of this problem is, is coming about, th these questions, that someone is either playing the victim um, indefinitely too, or um, maybe they were a victim. Uh, it's not an easy all or nothing situation. I b just bring this up for uh, people's consideration. Wish you well. Goodbye.